Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, on this week's riff, what are we going to be chatting about? It's the Acoustic Energy Carinium Loudspeakers, Mike. Carinium. 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 Yes. It's a good word. Yes, especially if you're a Roman. <laughs> God, <laughs> I didn't explain, I don't understand that. So, uh, Carinium, apparently, and I didn't know this before I looked it up, uh, it was the second century... Romano-British settlement that's now called Sirencester. No, you're kidding me. Is that true? That's, it is. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, We've absolutely. got Sirencester speakers. Yes, the Akusikenji Sirencesters, um, which actually sounds like a kind of Wharfdale name from the 70s. Do you well. know, I was just going to say so, exactly that. Yes. Yeah, yeah there's, there was a, another speaker manufacturer who liked naming the speakers after towns they, they and did. places. Yeah. Yes. And of course, um, Acoustic Energy is based not too far away from, uh, from that very uh, uh, town, which is no longer a Roman settlement, uh, I, uh, if, just in case you haven't been Thank there. Thank you, I haven't left so for a while. They, they've no, got electricity no. and running water. Yeah, so. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I had no idea. That's quite cool. Yeah. Um, and and they're, they're quite striking looking beasts as well, aren't they? They they're, are. Yeah. Uh, in fact, they're really unusual, yeah. I think. Yeah. We've, got, um, we've got a pair here in our listening room, which we've been having a play with. Yeah. Um, and they're sort of really wide... So, no, not really wide, but actually very narrow speakers, but they're much wider at the front than they are at the back. Yes. They're just, they sort of slope back round. Yeah, they like sort that. of taper back. They taper, yeah. yes, yeah. they do indeed. Which I'm, I'm um, sure is designed to reduce cabinet resonances. And there's a, there's, yeah. there seems to be a huge gap between the mid-range and the two bass units yes. as well. So the bass yeah. unit's sort of really low on the speaker. Yep. And the way you've got them set up here, which I'm assuming is, is the sort of correct positioning, yeah. um, they, they almost look like they're sort of leaning back, almost sort of leaning, leaning tower of speaker. Yeah, um, so you know, there's, they're, they're basically tilting upwards at about four degrees, apparently, which okay. is for time, and li- time alignment. Is that what it's for? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's not a wonky speaker stand or a no. nap spikes. It's, it was designed like that. It was interesting because when we were listening, I was sort of moving my ears around in yeah. different planes to see if, if it affected the treble, yeah. and it really didn't make much no. difference at all. No. So, um, and I also think it's probably fair to say, well, a couple of things about them. One, they're tough to drive. Yep. And they, they, they need some proper... Yeah. What's the word you used? Uh, kahunas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Um, they do need some serious wattage, yeah. don't they? You need uh, yes. you know, a, a proper yeah. beefy old amp. Yeah, absolutely. So they've, um, they've basically been designed to have a sensitivity of about 92 dB, which is obviously, on the face of it, very easy to drive. They go loud with not much power, but they are... You need a lot of torque, as it were, in the yes. amplifier as opposed to power. Sure. Um, so uh, you need really good current driving capability. Um, and I've had them with, with two amplifiers so far and will be, uh, will be trying more as well. Um, and I had a Music of Delta M5SI, I think it is, if, if, if my memory serves... And that's got a have lot. You, have of, you still got that? Or is that uh, back? It's uh, yeah, it's 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 in the other room now. Okay. But, uh, okay. Yeah. I'd like to have a listen to that yeah. at some point. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I've heard, I've heard that's quite yeah. a cool amp. It is, it, and it's a very good amp, and it's also um, very powerful for its uh, for its kind of price. So perfect um, for these. Absolutely, and that had no problem whatsoever. I think no. that's a two times one hundred and fifty watts RMS per channel, and really good current current drive. Yeah. Um, my Sony TAN86 power amp, uh, which I use for a lot of things, is a mere 90 watts and not so good. That's 90, 90 into 8 and not so good. Well, it's it's sort of, you know, roughly similar into 4, maybe a little bit more. But it's not a current, it's not a king of current, if you, if you no, see. No, sure. Uh, and that was struggling, I think, it with, really with, was. These, yeah, uh, yeah. with these speakers. Um, so you do need... Uh, a muscle amp, basically, a solid state muscle amp, uh, despite the sort of superficially high um, efficiency. And, and yeah. it was really interesting to see sort of, or listen to how it struggled, because it sounded, they sounded a bit slow and ponderous, yeah. um, and a sort of bit sort of lost in the bass. Yeah. Um, and also lacking in dynamics, which yeah. is all about that current delivery current delivery which yeah. you're talking about isn't that, it? that so was through the sony but through the music of Darty, didn't happen at all no sure um sure. and um actually the the strength of these is they can put out a very large amount of bass um with the right amp and uh, it goes down very low and it, it's solid it's not wobbly no um if it's got uh, the right amp driving it um 
So they're, they're, uh, I think the UK retail price is 6,000 quid. Yes. Um, uh, there or thereabouts. And, you know, there, there are, I can't think of many um, f- floor standards for that price that, that sort of do so well. When we've reviewed AE speakers in the past, we've always commented on their build quality. Uh, and you know, how well they're put together and they're aesthetically pleasing. These, for me, are exactly the same uh, ilk. They look great. They, they look like they've yeah. been really cared for. Um, loving the look of the cabinets. Yeah. I just think they're really, really smart. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting, isn't it? When we talk about Hi-Fi a lot, we talk about spending you know, a good chunk of your, your budget on the front end, then amp and then speakers. Yeah. Um, but we, we tend to sometimes neglect sort of amp and speaker matching. Yeah, and this is a classic case of where you can't neglect that. Absolutely, I mean, so you know, many people say, "What's the most important part of the system?" Well, I think the most important part is the relationship between the amp and the speaker. That's so uh, controversial. And uh, you know, uh, if if the amp can't drive the speaker properly, nothing else is going to be is going to be good. You know, you can have a the world's greatest turntable uh, or CD or whatever digital streamer front end, or um, and it's still going to sound you know out of out of puff basically, yes isn't yeah it? So, so so kind of analogy there would be um having like a ferrari and putting really rubbish tires on it yeah you know yeah. it's just so you can't actually get anything out of the ferrari at all absolutely i mean that what's the point of all that if, if you can't actually get traction if you can't put your foot down yes yeah. yes yeah. So, no i kind of get that i really yeah. do but i think it's a it's a, a, a an important part which which people don't really focus on too much yeah um, but it's re- we've really really brought it home to us today um, I think also and again I'm, I think you'll probably agree with me it, it's they're a little bit of an acquired taste um, and they take a little bit of getting used to because they're not when you when you listen to sort of most loudspeakers they that you get their tonal characteristic really quickly yeah. you, if they're exciting then they get you really quickly they yeah. hook you in quickly these are a slow burn aren't they you've got to, you've got to listen to them a few times so you kind of get what they're trying to do yeah, so I think um, th- so. This I think this is kind of uh, related to the choice of drive units. So the carbon fiber drive unit. So basically, the Carinium has got uh, a very similar mid and base drivers to the uh, a- AE Acoustic NG five hundred series, mm-hmm. which all use carbon fiber cone drivers. Um, and carbon fiber, I'm a big fan. I, I really like carbon fiber drivers. I've actually got. It might surprise you, Mike. Um, I've got some uh, 1976 Sony SS5050s with carbon fibre drive units. I did not um, know that. Yeah, or Car- they, Carbacon, they, as Sony used to call them. Are they in the museum? No, they're, they're, uh, they're in, in the utility room. Are they? You've got the yes. CO2 utility room Cur- system. Currently kind of acting as a sort of table. But uh, um, <laughs> We should yeah. drag those out yeah, at some yeah, point. Yeah, absolutely. To those. But they, they, funnily enough, got a similar kind of tonal quality to the AEs and carbon fibre... I remember Audax used to do in the 90s a uh, very good carbon fiber driver that Hi-Fi World put into uh, the kit speakers that Hi-Fi World used to sell, which were, um, I think they're called KLS3s, and they were World Audio Design KLS3s. And again, we had them with, with HDA, high definition aerodel, aerogel drive units, and then we took those out, put the carbon fiber drivers in, and they had a completely different tonality, yes, yeah. much darker and kind of more velvety kind of black velvet, as it were, tone. Whereas the, the sort of uh, aerogel uh, drivers were more like the kind of B&W Kevlars of that period, which were quite sort of, you know, squawky and like, quite sort of, uh, if that's a very, if that's the correct term to use amongst speaker designers, I'm not sure. sure. Um, I, get, I get it, I know, you. I know what you're trying thank to thank say. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. Um, so the point is that, um, Drive units have all got coloration, obviously we know that. Um, and many drive units have got slightly kind of brittle and tinselly and sort of forward, as it were, yes. uh, tonality. Um, and, uh, and that's obviously the, 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 the breakup of the cones and, and the sort of general resonances of the cone material, among other, other things. Whereas the carbon, musical fidelities, uh, so, sorry, acoustic energies, carbon yeah. drive units, carbon fiber cones, uh, have got a kind of quite a, a dull and 
Uh, not dull is the wrong word, but certainly not bright. They're not bright in They're any not way, shape, or form, any, are they? Absolutely. And, and we yeah. were listening to um, to a song which I know really well. We listened to "Le Villa Strangiato" by Rush. And there's an amazing guitar solo. Say that again. No, it's an amazing guitar <laughs> solo in it from Alex Lifeson, uh, which is which I have heard sort of make my ears bleed. Yes. Um, and listening to it on the AES, uh, actually completely the opposite. Um, yes. In fact, I was probably left wanting a little bit more. Yeah. But again, I probably put that down to the amp again. Yeah. But I think tonally they yeah. are. They're, they're not dull. That's not. You're, you're quite right. It's not quite the right word. But but they're they're not bright. They're not in your yeah. face. Well, they're, they're, they um, are dull compared to to most um, bright speakers. If that makes. Well, when any we sense. listened to your Wolf Dell E70s yeah. after with the same track, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, yeah. um, my my ears are still ringing, sort of yes. thing. So, uh, yes. but um, actually, you know, and going back to what we was what we were saying. They are a little bit of an acquired taste, yeah. And I think I'm acquiring the taste. When, yeah. I, when, I, when you first put them in, I was really yeah. underwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I sort of then you then actually what made the difference was listening to other pairs of speakers with the yeah. same song. Yeah. And you start realizing actually they're doing a lot of things really brilliantly. Here. Uh, exactly that. So you put them against many other speakers, and the other speakers sound squawky and harsh. So you you begin to realize what's going on. And uh, you know, a good analogy is the um, is your quad electrostatics. They mm. sound dull um, if you're used to listening to normal, you yes. know, cone speakers. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's all relative. And and with these, with the AEs, you, I mean, it, it needs a kind of breaking in period where you're, you know, you just get used to them and you begin to get into what they can do. Uh, and it's all it's more subtle. It's it's less in your face. Mm. Um, so they don't have kind of instant, you know, five second showroom appeal things, uh, type thing. Um, you, you kind of need to recalibrate the way you listen a bit, because they are so much more neutral and so much le less clangy and tinny and sort of, yes. you know, squawky. Um, they're classy speakers. They actually. really, really are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. I think um, I mean we listened to we listened to some Super Tramp, didn't we? Yeah. Um, and. Um, uh, actually, what was the song, what was the track you played? It was it was, an it was track Oh album. Darling, Oh Darling, which yeah. is which is really which is really nice, and it's yeah. um, quite hard to play. It can be yeah. it can sound pretty in your face, absolutely. And actually, it suited these speakers really really well. Yeah, uh, so it actually was quite mellow. Yeah, uh, well, that, say. that Breakfast in America album, which I think was seventy nine, was kind of mixed for American FM radio. Mm. You know, mm. so it is quite in your face. It's quite hard and. You compare it to Crime of the Century, which I think was 74. Crime of the Century is much more kind of balanced uh, mix. Yes. Whereas, whereas um, uh, Breakfast in America is much more in your face, much more kind of midi and toppy. Um, and the the AEs um, were very, very smooth, weren't they? They were really super smooth. smooth. Yeah. And yeah. I think um, along with the, the super smooth carbon uh, fiber drivers, the silk dome tweeter that, they, that they're matched to is an absolute honey. Um, it's really, really delicate and smooth and, and gentle. Mm -hmm. And we, um, we've been playing around with speakers today, obviously, and we, we, we went um, to the BMW 607 S3s. Which are brand new out, taken over from the S2. Yeah, brand new speaker. Obviously a 600 pound speaker, so then then you know, they're stand mounts and they're not a rival to the, to the Carinium's at all. But the point is, is the BMW's had um, or have a uh, titanium uh, tweeter, metal dome tweeter. Um, and as soon as we went from the <laughs> musical facility to the B&Ws, it's like clang, clang, bash, you know, it's like someone had sort <laughs> yes. of put a spanner in a washing machine or something like ding, ding. Yeah. And that's, I'm not um, dissing the, uh, the B&Ws. No, they're you know? really good. Well, they're really good. At, they're <laughs> great. I mean, you know, for what they are, and yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll talk about those in another riff. Yes. Um, but it, it just shows you the contrast between the really smooth and detailed and subtle sound from the musical dance, from acoustic energy speakers um, and, uh, you know, uh, with a silk dome versus the, the, the metal dome of the, of the BMWs. No, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, do you know, also I think with these, you, you, you've got a little bit of leeway with system choice as well because uh, they wouldn't mind a digital signal at all, yeah. you know, because I don't think it would ever be over bright. No. Um, so CD streaming, all that sort of stuff would actually work really, really nicely. Yeah. Um, and also, I think they would work with the sort of amplifiers I really like. Yes. So, for example, my big exposure Absolutely. stereo power yeah. amps, I think, yeah. would be great with this. Can you tell us what numbers they are? <laughs> 
I think a pair of exposure fours would be amazing with yeah. these. Uh, by amp them would be so, but that would really do them justice. Yeah. Absolutely, Big, powerful two man lift things. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, I reckon they would work uh, really well with some name amps. Yep. Because names can be, you know, quite uh, yep. forward yep. And, and sort of maybe a little bit brash sometimes. Quite etched sounding. And this, I think, yep. actually they work brilliantly yep. with these with these AEs. Yeah. Certainly, the, certainly the old the old name amps were forward and brash. Very much. The so. modern ones are a little a little explicit, as it were, well lit, but they're they're they're, they're not as brash as no, they But they the work well with these. They I'm work sure great, they and they have loads yeah. of power to drive. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, we, 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 we were at the Bristol show recently. Sorry, not the Bristol show, the Daventry, Daventry yeah. show. UK, UK audio UK show. UK audio show. Uh, and listen to the um, NVA amps yeah. there. And again, I think you know, yeah. the big NVA amps yeah. would work really nicely with these two. Yeah. I think that would be a great combination. Uh, yeah, big gutsy solid state with lots of current driving power. Yes. That's what you need. Um, musical Fidelity A, uh, A1, possibly not. <laughs> in fact probably any class yeah. a you know probably not yeah i mean um, tonally actually it would suit them well but in, in terms of power drive you, you, not, no chance the, the national grid doesn't have enough juice to no. to drive them so no. um but no really really cool uh, i'm i'm always scared to say this on high fire riff because we always get sort of comments at the end about comments like this but i think six thousand pounds is really good value for money yeah i yeah, really do absolutely when you look at sort of some of the speakers we've listened to for twice that amount yeah which i don't think are as good as these no um and you know certainly coming back from the, the yeah. uk show yeah uh, i think you know these would be these these would fit in beautifully yes i mean i think to me it's very interesting so i think the the acoustic energies 500 series uh is lovely mm. so it's it's basically um, I think uh, the the stand mounters, the 500 stand mounters are roughly a thousand quid. And then I think it goes up to the 509s. The 509s are my favorite model in that range, which are the small floor standers. Yes. Um, and they're, 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 they're sort of compact enough not to, uh, you know, get too boomy in a room, uh, but they're, you know, they're relatively easy to drive and just sound great. And the 520s are the big, ones in that in that range and they're about three and a half thousand quid something like that yes. um and yeah. um so but they are really big and uh and meaty and that you you kind of need the right room for them um and these are basically the sort of next step up from the 520s yeah. but they're so much better in so many ways they're much more refined much more detailed um and you know they don't quite have the kind of raw uh, kind of musicality of 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 the of the the five twenties, um, because they don't have the coloration. If if you see what I mean, I do. It's I less, totally get it. Less boom and tears. Yeah, and it's more kind of subtlety and detail and depth. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in fact, can I just say you're absolutely right on that because they they are they have this lovely subtlety and detail. Yeah. And also they image yeah. brilliantly. Brilliant. I mean, yeah. Really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. They do absolutely I'm loving that. Im image way better, I think, than the five twenties. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, so and they've got good stage depth. There's a, there's real depth. We played Massive, yeah. um, Herbie Hancock's um, uh, the Prisoner uh, track, which is a, a beautifully recorded classic blue note from I think the late '60s, uh, and and it it was very immersive. It, it sounded was fabulous. Yeah, it yeah. sounded like we were kind of in yeah. in the room and and, and really yeah. sort of really subtle as well. Yeah. And yeah. and actually, as you yeah. say, quite delicate. Yeah, very um, delicate. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. Um, I think AE are doing some great work at the moment. Yeah. And as you know, we did a previous riff on the AE1 Actives. Um, yeah. And I, I think they're amazing as well. So, yeah. you know, and again, they, they, they've kind of got that sweet spot of uh, their speakers are really nicely made, really attractive, really well put together and, and all sound all sound great within the range. So, so cool. Yeah. Can we do a, can we do a riffometer on these? Yeah, so... Um, what are you going to give them? W with everything, with all the provisos, everything we said about how difficult to drive, because, I mean, sometimes the best products are uh, hard to get yes, going, imme yeah. you know, yeah. uh, immediately, as it were. It's like the best albums are quite hard to get into at exactly. first, aren't they? Yes. Well, I know, uh, you know, I, I know it took you a long time to get into Rod Stewart's... Uh, <laughs> You know, some guys, was it blondes have more fun or whatever it is? <laughs> you but, don't so, even know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, absolutely that. So you're so right. So, you know, a great album sometimes needs playing through a lot. And you, you kind of need to sit with these and, you know, get the right front end, the right amplifier, 
and then kind of position them right. They need to come out into the room a bit. Yeah. Um, they've got rear, small, fairly small rear ports, but uh -huh. they can sort of set off room resonances that are too far back. Um, and um, yeah, we've got a little bit of toe in as well, uh, and that really helped. Um, but once you've taken time and really got them giving their best, they are, they are I think, superb value for money. I'm going to give them nine, I think. I can't see yeah. why why we wouldn't give them nine. It, yeah. It's 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 a you know they're superb, as you say. The only caveat for me, the sort of the lost point, is the fact that I think you do have to be quite careful with your amplifier matching. Yeah. But I think when you get that right, and you get the sweet spot. Yeah. These are some fabulous yeah. speakers. Well, absolutely. You need a big room and a big amp. Yes. So yeah, yeah. and absolutely. decent taste in music, and not Rod Stewart. That too. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> thank you very much indeed for watching this episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. We look very much forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.